Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here um, with us today on, online as we gather together remotely to worship together. Um, if you got our email this morning to let you know that service is happening, you'll know that uh, we're sending out the email a little bit earlier from now on just so that people can, uh, can have the link ahead of time. The link that was in today's email will work every week from now on, so if you want to save that or bookmark that, that link will, will get you to our live service on YouTube. Um, at any point uh, going forward. So whenever we're live, use that link and then you, you'll get to it. But that's the technical side of things. I wanted to also bring to your attention some of the announcements, and they were in the email as well, but I wanted to highlight them. Uh, we have our, our membership meeting this week at, uh, on Wednesday the 24th at 1 p.m. here at church. Um, if you would like to come, please let me know. Um, I just want to make sure that we have everything spaced out and set up properly so that we can properly distance together here in the sanctuary. Um, that meeting will be here at church, obviously. Um, you can email me at pastorandyparks at gmail.com and uh, let me know if you'd like to be here. Uh, we have a few already that, that have said they want to come. If that's an inconvenient time for you, because it is in the middle of the afternoon on a weekday, uh, let me know. There will be another class. We will do one on an evening or a weekend based on what people uh, would like to have happen uh, for their schedules. So um, if you would like to go to this one, let me know. If you'd like to go to one but can't make this one, let me know. Um, it's just an informal time of we talk about what it means to be a member here at church. It's not a commitment. If you go and decide you don't want to be a member, that's okay too. Uh, we would just love to have you and talk to you more about uh, the church and the work that we're trying to do here uh, in our world. If you have something to submit to the newsletter, the newsletter deadline is March 3rd. So start thinking now. Those newsletter deadlines do sneak up on you quickly. I can speak from experience on that. They, uh, they sneak up on you. So if you'd like anything in the newsletter, please email that to Linda Landing, and her email uh, address is in the email and in our bulletin this week. Also, as of Wednesday, we are now in, in the season of Lent, and we are doing a... A, a drive that will benefit uh, Feed More Western New York, which will benefit uh, those in need in our community. We're asking that people throughout Lent give either a dollar a day or one non-perishable food item per day um, toward the cause of hunger in our community. So whether it's 40 non-perishable food items over the course of Lent or $40 over the course of Lent, uh, we would just love to be able for each of us to contribute in that way uh, so that our church can make a, a tangible, positive impact uh, on our community and on our world around us. And, and there doesn't seem to be anything more in line with the teachings of Jesus than that. So I encourage any of you to, to set that aside, set those things aside. We will, you can give online on our website. Um, for physical food items, contact myself, contact Lissa. Um, uh, you can contact Kathleen Waters and let us know when you want to stop by church. We'll be here so that you can drop your food donations off as well. So we want to make this easy for you um, so that we can take better care of those around us. I think that's the announcements. Um, oh, one other one. Um, I typically, in the past, I've been making Wednesday videos. I have not for the last couple of weeks been making Wednesday videos. And uh, I'm going to give you back to them this week, and it will be a... Um, kind of a book study, I want to go through the book um, Searching for Sunday by Rachel Held Evans. It's a, it's a great book, I think, that we as a church would, would benefit from going through that together. I am going to go through it and talk about it on the video. You don't have to have read the book to follow along. I think it will be good regardless. If you did want to read along, let me know and I can get you a copy of that book. Um, so, yes, uh, the book is Searching for Sunday by Rachel Held Evans, and I'll be doing a Wednesday video on that each week uh, for the next few months. So I think that'll be really a good uh, use of those Wednesday videos. But I think that's it. Am I missing any announcements or anything? Okay. I think we're okay. Would you take a moment with me as we calm our hearts and be aware of the presence of God here, now, and all around us? our invocation prayer this morning. Let us lift up the name of the Lord and rejoice, for God hears our prayers. Praise the one who brings healing to our pain, who causes joy to follow the long night of sorrow. 
We will not be silent. We will not still our tongues. O Lord, our God, we give thanks to you forever. Amen. Would you join us in our opening hymn this morning, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Hear our prayer of confession. Father God, we confess we can go through the motions of our lives and neglect to spend time with you in prayer. Forgive us, O oh God, when we come to you in prayer as a last resort rather than a first reaction. Give us the discipline to draw closer to you every opportunity we get and to grow in that relationship with you. Amen. Another thing we sometimes forget is that God loves us very much. God loves us enough to forgive us again and again and again. God loves us so much that God lived among us, died, and rose again in Jesus of Nazareth. So whatever you forget, even if it's forgetting time to pray, always remember that God loves you and forgives you. Thanks be to God. about you, but I'm looking forward to when we can get together again and pass the peace. That would sound nice, doesn't it? <laughs> I miss that. Our next hymn this morning is Sweet Hour of Prayer. Testament this morning is 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 1 through 10. 
Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted by my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and rises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dusk. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries, shall be scattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. Here ends the hearing of his holy word. Our New Testament passage this morning can be found in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 18 through 27. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not of its own, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hopes that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it in patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For, it, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with signs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. As we enter into this Lent season together, as we are in this Lent season together already, um, I'd like to do a, a series of, I don't want to use the phrase back to basics, but essentially the, the, the building blocks of faith, of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. What is what is key? What is critical? What are things that are not uh, controversial or not open to debate? But what are the, the undisputed building blocks of a follower of Jesus and somebody whose life is aligned with the purposes of God? And so this week we're going to start with the topic of prayer. Prayer gets talked about a lot. And I know there are some, there's plenty of people who say that they don't pray or they're not religious or they don't uh, have any you know, relationship with God, but there are certain moments where we, we can find ourselves talking about prayer at the very least. How many of you have been doing five or ten over the speed limit, and then we see uh, an officer of the law, and we, we automatically shoot up that prayer, oh God, please don't let him pull out behind me. I got places to be, and I don't have the money in the bank for this ticket. How often have we heard an angry person say, they better pray I don't catch them. We, we talk about prayer sometimes. We talk, there's the old saying that, you know, as long as there are, there's still standardized testing, there will, there will be prayer in schools. 
the idea that we pray sometimes, we talk about prayer, it's even in a, in a society that is increasingly secularized, prayer is still something that happens. I was listening to an interview this week where somebody who describes themselves as not religious, but they said that they still find themselves praying from time to time when, when they don't know what else to do. But prayer is one of those central disciplines of being a Christian. And, uh, and I know that that's probably the least attractive word. It's probably the word that causes most eyes to glaze over is discipline. Uh, nobody wants to, be, to come to church to hear about the disciplines. I mean, this is, I mean, why don't we just change it from Sunday morning service to the uh, eat your vegetable hour with Pastor Andy? Like, it's nobody wants to talk about discipline. It's just not exciting. It's not necessarily uplifting and thrilling, but they are important. These disciplines are, can be the difference between a life firmly rooted in a faith in Christ and a life that is constantly being battered around and swayed with each new circumstance. Having these spiritual disciplines matter and they can help you cre- create and build a better life. The word discipline comes from the same root word as disciple meaning a pupil or a learner. Disciplines, it, being a disciplined person is someone who is just committed to continuing to learn and study and grow. And when it comes to following the example of Christ and, and being like Jesus, I think it's safe to say that we're all still students and none of us have quite cornered the market on it just yet. So what kind of a prayer are you? Are you the kind of person who prays when something goes wrong? When, when things are, are tough and you, you run out of other options, do you pray? Because you literally don't have anything else you can do. Do you pray as though it's a monologue? Do you just sit down to pray and you talk to God and you tell him everything about your day and you can monologue for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes about the concerns of your heart and, and how your day has gone and that kind of thing um, without much stopping to listen? Or is prayer simply routine? Just something you do. You, you pray on Sundays when we're at church. You might pray before your meals. Um, I know in our house we, we pray with the kids before they go to bed at night. And uh, that could just be the routine, that you pray in, in routine. Um, growing up at my, uh, uh, with my uh, dad's side of the family, um, we would go to dinners and whatnot, and we would always say grace, and it would always be the same thing. God is good, God is great, let us thank him for our food, amen. And over the years, they've added some things to that that's gotten longer over the years. There was no vote, it just kind of happened. But it it became so rote, it was just something you had to do before the food got cold. You had to get through it. When we pray at dinner at home, I will typically say something in prayer, and the kids, if they want to add something, they'll put their hand on my arm and let me know that they want to say something. And... uh, and William will typically want to close us out. So I'll say something, and then he'll put his arm on, and he'll say, in your name we pray, amen, because he wants to eat. He, for a while, called it locking it down. He wanted to lock it down and finish it up so he could eat. Do we sometimes use prayer as a deflection? I had a friend who worked for a Christian organization, and, uh, and he was going through some stuff, and he, he just kind of needed someone to talk to. But when he would bring his, his concerns and kind of what he was dealing with to p- his coworkers at this Christian organization, he would start to explain, and they would interrupt him with, well, just trust God and pray about it. And he's like, yeah, neat, but I'd like someone to listen. I'd like someone to empathize. I'd like s- someone to just sit with me as I wrestle with this stuff. How easy is it to say, well, I'll be praying for you, as opposed to the actual answer to prayer, which just might be listening, taking that person seriously, looking for a way that you might be able to get involved yourself and help out. Jesus prayed by taking time to be alone. He would often disappear, and his followers wouldn't know where he was for a few days because he would disappear into the wilderness just to be with his father. And it's not that the location had a whole lot to do with why, how he was praying or, or what was being said. It was just being able to give his focus 
to God, that there were no other people who needed something from him. There were no distractions. There were no, there were no, there were a lot fewer barriers to entry to, be, to giving his focus and time in prayer to God. And in these prayers, he remained open and humble. He, it wasn't saying, it wasn't a monologue of, I want this and this. He wasn't sitting on Santa's lap giving a Christmas list. I want this, I want this, I want this. He wasn't monologuing about how things went. He presented his pr- prayers and petitions to God. And in one example, he followed it up with, but your will be done, not mine. Prayer is such an act of, of obedience. It's humbling, right? I don't know if any of you still do this. Um, It depends on the quality of your knees, but sometimes people will will kneel down by their bedside to pray. Um, Sometimes, uh, I mean, most all the time when people pray, they bow their heads and they fold their hands. This is a humbling stance. If it is a somewhat vulnerable stance, if you're looking at it from a purely... um, like utilitarian perspective, if your eyes are closed and your head is bowed and your hands are folded, you are in a very somewhat defenseless position if someone were to attack you. It's it, not that you expect to be attacked on a regular basis, but it is an act of humility. You are humbling yourself. You are, you are letting down your defenses. You're letting your guard down and you are giving your time and attention and focus to God. It's almost like the act of praying in and of itself before you've said a single word is kind of a reminder of how the universe is to be ordered. That we are supposed to humble ourselves before a holy God and allow him to speak to us just as much as we're speaking to him. And prayer is also about building relationship. God wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to know us. He wants us to to partner with him to make this world a better place, but the relationship doesn't work if you don't spend time together. How many marriages fall apart because both parties are working so much or or consumed with other things so much that they don't spend any time together until they don't recognize each other anymore? How many of you have that friend who only calls you when they need something? I have a couple people in my life who literally only speak to me when they need help fixing their computer which is fine, I'm happy to help, and I always say yes. But, I mean, it's, it's, uh, there, there are, that's not the basis for a strong relationship. It functions, but it's not a strong relationship. And we are so lucky and blessed because of that last chunk of the New Testament passage here. It says, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for when we do not know how to pray as we ought, that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. When we don't know what to pray, when we don't know what to ask for, when we turn on the, the news or we look at the events of our life and we, just, and we just bring it to God and we say, I don't even know where to start with this. Maybe it's when we have a family member who is in pain and suffering and we don't know what to ask for in prayer. Maybe when things are such a mess, there is no clean answer. God, just make X happen. There is no clean answer. There's nothing, we don't know what to ask for. And I used to think that what this meant was when, because this is my own self-deprecating mindset going on it here, is this, when my puny little brain doesn't know what to pray for, that a bigger spirit of God steps in and helps us out and, and kind of limps us along across the finish line because sometimes we just can't put the words together ourselves. But as I think about it more and spend more time with this passage, and honestly, after having gone through the last year or so, I sometimes think the most sincere prayers I have and the most guttural and like from the depths of my heart, I don't know what to pray. The most sincere prayers I just bring to God and say, all I have is this big pile of mess. Eh. Fix it. Help me with it. Help me understand it. Give me a perspective for it. I don't know what to do with this, but here. 
sometimes the, I don't think this is a situation where the Spirit, it says the Spirit helps us in our weakness, and we hear the word weakness and we think, oh, that must obviously be a bad thing. But I think the Spirit interceding for us on our behalf to make sense of what we want to say to, to God the Father, I think that's sometimes some of the most beautiful prayers you can pray. When we're hurting, when we have somebody in our lives who needs help, when we need help, when we see a situation of unrest and hatred and, and injustice and we just don't know what to pray but our hearts are troubled and we see how things should be and they're not that way and we just bring it to the Lord, I think that those prayers are held in just as high, if not higher, esteem than any others. It takes time. It takes effort to make praying a part of our lives, especially when we don't know what to say. It can be frustrating. We can find ourselves in situations where we say, well, I don't know what to say. What am I supposed to say here? Like it's some sort of performance, right? It, it's a discipline, and it's like a muscle. It takes time to develop. There are some people who it takes them a lot of effort to sit down and pray. Other people will pray like it's as easy as taking their next breath. They pray in the car on the way to work. They, they pray while they're eating their food. <laughs> they pray as they're falling asleep at night. It's just the easiest thing in the world. But are we following the example of Jesus? Are we making sure that we free ourselves from as much distraction as possible? Are we listening to what God is saying and what God is doing as much as we are monologuing? We serve a God who loves each and every one of us and lovingly made each and every one of us and desperately wants to spend time with us. For all of the things that we give our time and attention to, are we willing to give time to that relationship? Even if the words don't come easy, even if we don't know what to pray. Over the course of Lent, I, I hope that prayer is something that we build into our day, even if it has to be routine to get you started. Are we willing to be people who pray first and not as a last resort? Father God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to speak with you, that we don't need to bring our prayers to someone else and have them bring them to you. Lord, we just, we can bring our prayers and petitions to you directly. And when they don't make any sense and when they're a mess and when they are full of passion and they are full of heartfelt need but lack the words we thankful we are so thankful that your spirit intercedes for us help us to help us to use this opportunity help us to be people who pray because it brings us closer to you and it will make us more of who we were meant to be we ask these things in your name jesus name amen Part of the uh, prayer list that gets sent out uh, each, or part of the email that gets sent out on Sunday mornings about service includes a link to the bulletin, and in the bulletin is our prayer list. It's a list of requests that we, we hope that we can spend time with over the course of the week because we know that God hears our prayers. We know how important it is that these prayers are, are answered. Um, there's the prayer list that's printed also, we pray for, for Nancy, and we pray for her friend Irma and her daughter Stacy. Stacy had a, a stroke yesterday. Um, Polly, who's been coming to church with us for a while now, Polly has friends in Texas. Please, please pray for them. They're doing fine, except for their water is frozen right now. 
the situation down south in Texas and Arkansas and Alabama and Mississippi. It's, it's not funny that they got a little bit of snow. It's, it's dire that they're facing situations of losses of heat and of drinking water. It's just as cold in some parts of Texas right now as it is in Buffalo. It's 20 degrees outside here, and it's colder in some places in Texas right now. And without heat and running water and, and food shortages going on, it's, it's a dire situation. So we keep all of our friends, brothers and sisters, whether they're in Christ or they would identify elsewhere, we pray that all of the residents of, of the southern United States are kept in prayer. And we, we pray that they're safe and healthy in this incredibly difficult time right now. you pray with me? Father God, you know our prayer list. You know the concerns on our hearts. You know the things that trouble us and the ways in which we need your supernatural intercession, where our, our own strength and our own abilities have fallen short and we need an all-powerful holy God involved in these situations. And we know that you are, Lord God. Help the requests that are listed on the prayer list. Help the, the requests that were passed on to me this morning. We pray for all of these situations, the, 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 individual, the individual health concerns, the individual concerns for fatigue and those who need strength, and for the large concerns in the southern United States right now and in situations that require peace all over the world. We lift all these things up to you in prayer. We bring them to you in prayer. And we'll do so in the way that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, I just want to thank everybody who helps make service possible this week. Um, we thank you, Linda, for doing the lay reading. 
thank you Beth for running camera and Sandy for playing piano. It's, uh, it would have been cozier and warmer to stay home and sip cocoa and watch it. And, uh, and these three ladies have been up here and they've been a part of it and helping out. So I, I appreciate all of you very much for doing this. Um, our final hymn today will be Spirit of the Living God. people committed to prayer, even when we don't have the words for it. May this precious time with our God bring us peace in a world that offers us very little. And may we grow closer to the Lord in that time, becoming more and more who we are truly meant to be each day. Amen.